Well, it's now time to bring you our first feature on the show today. Over the years, the Central Bank of Niger has been at the forefront in its support for the small and medium-sized enterprises in Nigeria with the introduction of various policies which will also aid lending to the real sector. One of its numerous interventions to this sector is the continuous increment of loan to deposit ratio, which currently stands at about 65% for commercial banks, which has already tremendously increased lending to the real sector of the economy, one which has already in turn made business easier for some business owners. The small sector has also, however, been badly affected by the recent outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, where many of these businesses, SMEs, have been forced to pack up their businesses, rendering many Nigerians jobless. As a means of sustainability, the federal government also launched a 75 billion Naira survival fund for micro, small and medium-sized enterprises to manage the effect of the pandemic with a view to boosting the economy by saving existing jobs and also creating new job opportunities. Well, I now have my guest joining me via uh, Skype to have much more on this. Good to have you on the show today. Now, the scheme is a conditional grant to support vulnerable micro and small sized enterprises in meeting their payroll obligations and also safeguard jobs in the MSME sector. But do you think this is a robust plan? Well, thank you for having me. Uh David, I mean, I think um, I think it's something. I can't speak for whether it is robust or not. Um, there's a lot of funding need in the economy. There's a lot of requirement for stimulus. Um, but if you look at the size of the economy and you know the amount of money we are talking about, um, I wouldn't call that robust. But I think it's something. You know, it supports small and medium scale enterprises allow them to stay in business, um, you know, it reduces the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, uh, it's probably going to be a palliative measure, you know, for most of the people that are within that category. And at this point in time, so many will say every effort is needed. We need concerted efforts. But while in now, let's talk about the scheme, which is expected. It's estimated to save not less than 1.3 million jobs across Nigeria and specifically impact over uh, 35,000 individuals per state. On a state by state level now, what should be the regional and individual efforts by states to create hubs and manage these resources? Well, I mean, I think all hands should be on deck uh, across the 36 state of the Federation, including the FCT. Uh, clearly, the unemployment numbers differs across states. It looks like the numbers are more staggering up north than they are, you know, down here in the south. So clearly, um, you know, the states where you have staggering number of the unemployed, you know, they will definitely have more to do. And in fact, if you look at the number you just called down, uh, some thousand. Um, or, how, uh, uh, that something thousand job. Exactly. You know, it's still, yes. it's still considerably low compared to uh, if you look at the unemployment data that was recently published by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. You know, and you know that's just the number of those that are unemployed. We haven't mentioned those that are underemployed. If you put underemployment and unemployment together in Nigeria, we're looking at you know a percentage of around fifty six percent. Um, out of a labor force of rough, roughly 80 million, it means that you know more than half of those guys do not have job, or what they are doing is not even enough to, mm. to pay their bills. So all and definitely have to be on deck to not only rely on this package, but to see what else we can do to get our youths as well as, as our unemployed, uh, you know, something worthwhile to do. Mm. And now, working with big data at the end of the day, especially with the impact of the COVID-19, is quite a critical situation. What do you make of the criteria 
for eligibility for employees of MSMEs, for example. The uh, employees' company must be registered in Nigeria under the Corporate Affairs Commission and also must also have a BVN uh, by company and then the CEO also must have at least a staff strength of no less than 3%. And for self-employed individuals in the following categories from service providers and transportation sector, that includes bus drivers and a whole lot more. What do you make of the process for registration to be able to access this fund? Well, um, I don't know if I should say fortunately or unfortunately, the authorities have to use some form of criteria to screen out people so that they can get this facility to the right people. And if you look at different texts, there are different definitions for what should be SMEs and small businesses and all of that. So I think what they've just put in place is a structure to you know, be sure that those that are eligible are not only the ones that are going to be able to get or get, they can benefit from this facility, but they also done the needful either in the past or before you know they apply for this facility. And by um, the need for, I mean they must have registered their business, they must show evidence of you know you know tax payment mm. and all of these things mm -hmm. that you know show you as a responsible business within the economy, you mm. know, is, I mean, mm. I think it's important, you know, it's help improve financial inclusion. If you look at the issue of BVN, for example, it also help us gather enough data around the size of small business that we actually have. If this is going to compel some people to go and register either with the CAC or to go and join some form of, a, 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 you know, association, maybe trade union association or, you know, you know, any of these associations, you know, I think it's good for data collection, it's good for policy making, and it's good for, you know, government uh, policy decisions generally. Mm. And, and also, also mm. go ahead, David. and still talking a little bit much more about streamlining verification for other grants and stimulus, at least with this first part that we are having, at the end of the day, we'll still need much more stimulus to um, catalyze the economy, especially in priority sectors, healthcare, agro processing, the creative industries, local oil and gas, as well as aviation. These are critical pillars of the economy. But just going back to the fact that you made mention of verification is key. How much of a platform and how do we go about creating the step-by-step -step verification to ensure that at the end of the day, we have this fund to go to the right people? Well, I mean, I think those things are already created. It's not like, you know, this um, scheme is meant to start the verification process that is, was not already there. I think what they are just saying with the criteria is that if you must access the facility, then you must have registered, you must have a BVN number in the past. Your business must be registered with CAC. Exactly. Um, and all of that. So I think the officials are just going to do their own due diligence by looking through the files that you are sub submitting when you're applying for this facility to be sure that you are eligible. And if you are eligible and you are lucky, because I'm sure there's going to be a whole <laughs> lot of people, exactly. businesses that are going to be mm. trying to access this. Mm. If you are eligible and you're lucky, then you, know, you get it. Luck is quite critical. But now let's also talk about the role of the Bank of Industry as well as the Nigerian Export Import Bank. We've also seen quite a push as well from the Central Bank of Nigeria looking at the intensified policy direction they are adopting. What do you make of the roles of these banks we've made mention so far? Well, I think Nigeria, uh, Nigeria's monetary policy is currently pushing something called you know, a development financing, you know, uh, model, you know, I, I think that's what they are doing with the bulk of their intervention funds. And the likes of Bank of Industry, Bank of Agriculture, Bank of Development, um, there's a new one that is being set up now. You know, all of these, you know, um, um, banks, their role is basically to push development to, you know, allow, you know, eligible businesses access intervention funds from the central bank, you know. Um, I think the advantage of that is that you are able to drive uh, 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 credit growth in the economy at a, at a rate 
a market price that is considerably lower than what a commercial bank would have given you. Because the you know the spirit of the central bank doing it is basically to target development um, in targeted um, sectors of the economy, just like you mentioned, like healthcare sector, like a Greek. And we've seen what the Anchor Borrowers program has done. We've seen some other facility in the um, healthcare sector, as well as the small and medium scale, you know, sector is doing. So, I mean, I think it's mainly about development. Our only fear, however, is whether you know it doesn't compete, whether it doesn't take, um, you know, commercial banks and other uh, businesses in the economy that, you know, that is their core business. Whether you know all of this intervention does not take them out. Of business in the process, but I mean, if you are receiving any. Okay, Wale, well, let's now talk about the survival of banks as well, and then their role in supporting the real sector of the economy. Looking at the direction as well we've seen so far in terms of liquidity ratio and a loan to deposit as well requirements and the ratio we've had so far, do you think this is creating a sustainable plan in the long run for the businesses? to be able to have much more lending, lending from the banks? And how do we improve on the rates? We've seen company income tax rates also with zero rates. That's, we've had a push for that for small companies and also a rate reduction for medium-sized companies. But going back to the banks now, with the liquidity ratio and loan to deposit ratio we are having, what's your take on that? Yes, like I was saying, um, the banks are extremely big. Um, they are total assets. And trillions of naira. So actually, beyond you know the small businesses and the agri farmers and you know the intervention fund that goes into the to the healthcare sector, that many of this intervention fund by central bank is targeting, the banks can actually facilitate transactions in other sectors of the economy, such as the manufacturing, oil and gas. Telecom is actually a big thing right now in, in the post-COVID era. And the banks have been doing that, you know, most of them from our conference calls with them, that's where many of them are looking at. And they are doing it because there are concerns around, um, you know, non-performing loans because of the COVID-19 um, effect. But even that fear is kind of slowing down now that uh, most of the economy are being, you know, reopened. And with what the central bank has done, interest rate has, you know, fallen considerably. So banks are actually out looking for, you know, investment opportunities or projects to finance at the moment. So, I mean, I think they are doing their role, um, but, you know, their rates are a bit higher compared to what the intervention funds are offering. Well, at the end of the day, we are looking forward to the year 2021, for example, in Edo, Ekiti, Katsina, Ogun, Bauchi, as well as Enugu states. They're expecting to commission shared facilities that will bring MSMEs together and also cluster and provide shared equipment and resources. And we also expect the lending would improve as well. But at the end of the day, we're just optimistic that we have much more strategic plans put in place. Thank you very much for your contribution on the show today. Wale Olusi. Thank you for having me.